I believe that Paul showed him footage of me doing the Van Terminator and asked him, Can you do this? One of a Kind with Rob Van Dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Take one. Thanks for the two bucks. We covered this maybe on the first episode or at least the second episode. Shane O'Mac, Coast to Coast, did you ever get credit from him? No, he never. I don't remember him ever mentioning it to me. If he did, then uh, I don't remember. He definitely didn't give me credit. No, he didn't. It never came up. Never came up. Um, I believe that Paul showed him footage of me doing the Van Terminator and asked him, can you do this? Can you do that? He said, oh, maybe if I put a trash can on the ropes, I got like an extra three feet there. I don't have to fly down. Uh, so that's what the coast to coast is. But, but um, you know, I get I get credit from uh, from you guys, from uh, all the all the hardcore fans that were there from the beginning. Yep. Yep. It's amazing anyway, like a lot of my stuff. But I thought of that with the Van Terminator, like how how could I just be the first one to ever think of doing that? You know, like but my thinking is obviously out of the box. I don't see any other way. And so when I do moves that people haven't seen, some you know, part of me is like, how is that? You know, it's a four-sided ring, three ropes. Wrestling's been around for, you know, a long, long time, right? Hundreds of years if you want to go back to uh, uh, Odysseus and uh, battling over the armor of Ajax. Uh, <laughs> anyway... Um, I'm, I'm pretty stoked that I've gotten credit for being original. And when I started hearing that, it made me put more energy into that, into celebrating my individuality and, and being, uh, more confident that being myself was the right decision. And, uh, boom, it just all, all worked out so organically. Yeah, that leads me to a couple of questions regarding the doc, too, because what was neat is, like, they showed your Van Terminator, like, a couple times on the documentary. And, like, uh, I remember watching, seeing it for the first time when I was, like, 14 or 13 and being like, I did not know that was possible. <laughs> like, yeah, there was right. thing to do. And so it, like, completely blew my mind. It was, like, the most amazing move I've ever seen. And, like, so, like, for you to think, like, oh, I can't believe nobody's ever done that before. Like or nobody thought about that before, where I didn't think it was physically possible for somebody to do. So. But that, I mean, in all likelihood, that thought probably is what kept anyone else from thinking of doing it. Yeah. Was just the subconscious understanding that that can't be done, mm -hmm. and so that's like a uh, a barrier that not everyone um, can comfortably think around. So. Uh, now, now that now that I've proved it can be done, you, I see guys on indie shows. You know, the neon green dude runs uh, halfway down the top rope and then jumps off it. You know, to to make it his own, and it's like, uh, or they do shooting stuff, whatever. Um, pretty cool, you know. That, but but also sometimes the ring is 16 feet, sometimes it's 20, 24 feet if you're in Japan. So. so um, that, that makes a big difference. Sometimes the ropes are loose. Sometimes they're tight. Huge, huge variety there when you wrestle for different companies in different uh, levels of promotions and all over the world. You know, you can't count on consistency with with any of that. So so th that is a, a move that takes, um, a, you know, uh, you hope for the best conditions to pull it off anyway. Okay, so... <laughs> When it comes to an ECW ring, how big was that ring? 18 by 18. 18 by 18. The ropes are pretty good for all that, too, to do that? Best ropes ever. My favorite ropes out of my whole career. There's steel cable. Uh -huh. Steel cable run through a rubber hose uh, type of uh, material, and then you tighten with the turnbuckles, 
And you have to have a solid double frame. A lot of the rings on the indie scene don't have the double frame. So when they tighten the ropes up, the bottoms then come out because the the level of the uh, the platform itself becomes a fulcrum point. So when you pull in on the top, the bottoms come out. Mm-hmm. And you can't solve that no matter how many times you, you, you put a cross cable underneath it with a winch or duct tape it or whatever you're going to do. There's nothing that will uh, balance out the pressure of the boys hitting the ropes and, and all that pulling in on the top. So they get looser and looser and the poles come leaning in. And, you know, that's that's something that I've dealt with for 30 years. But uh, but a good ring like uh, ECW's ring. Um, I, I actually sold ECW um, their ring oh. when when I first went there. I mean, they already had a ring. Mm-hmm. Then I sold them a ring and we used that. And then my understanding is that they built a replica of it. And then the ring I sold them, they moved to the wrestling school that Taz uh, and Perry Saturn were doing, I guess. So, um, yeah, somehow I, when I was living in Augusta, Georgia, I remember buying this ring that was the, the history of it, as I was told from a local guy that I bought it from. He said that, uh, Back in the territory days, they used this ring, um, and it was left like in the basement of the Civic Center. It was an old, uh, I believe, NWA ring, uh-huh. abandoned. I think I bought it for a grand, and I think I sold it for five grand to ECW. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah. But it's my favorite ring, 18 feet by 18 feet, and that's the platform. I mean, the ropes are, you know, then 16 inside, but um plywood um uh, no spring and, and and metal metal bars all the way across runners that and then the plywood on top i like a ring to be stiff i like when i push off of it to jump mm-hmm. to do my entrance kick Rob, man when i jump up to do that helicopter kick at the beginning yeah most of today's rings they're they're so soft or, or they're pussified so that when I push, the ring goes down, uh-huh. you know, and, and it kills my jump. And so it's like it blows me up, makes me feel like I'm like I'm trying to jump in water or something. It's weird. It's, it has an opposite effect from what I think the people who made the ring are trying to get. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, so what is a WWE ring then? Is it 18 by 18 too, or is that? That, one, that one's a little bit bigger. Okay. That one, uh, uh, so that one's 20. It's 20 feet. Um, I think it's 20 feet inside the ring. Oh, okay. And then, um, which would make it, which would make it 24 feet. Wow. Okay. Not a hundred percent sure. It might be off by as much as two feet, but I, but I think that's what it. Uh, I think that's what it is. Otherwise, <laughs> it's 20 feet, uh, and there's a foot apron. Uh, which isn't very much. I think they have a big ass apron too. Yeah. Um, right now, um, I can't remember. It's. I think that it's. I think that uh, that it's twenty by twenty. But if it's only two more feet, I think it's twenty by twenty total. Actually. Wow. wow. Okay. Okay. So. And like- the Japan ring, all Japan, I think was twenty four feet, and I think that's the only one that I was in consistently that was, that was that big. That was, yeah. That seems like, <laughs> they, I never heard it like uh, from that, that kind of size, like for 20 feet it, inside. So, yeah. So if you figure it's only, you know, an extra um, three feet on each side, it doesn't seem like that much. Right. You're right. Right. Yeah. But uh, also the ropes, uh, like WWE used real nylon ropes as opposed to the steel cable running through a rubber hose. So that makes a big difference. Is it more, are you, is there a tendency to slip more on those, the nylon? Um, no, because usually both of them are just kind of like wrapped with colored tape anyway. And that's the, that's what you get your traction and that's what you feel. Yeah. The, that's what the epidermis is of it. But, um, but the, 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 Steel cable's gonna bounce you a lot better and uh, not wear 
not give to the stretch as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you find it a lot of wrestlers are more uh, partial to the steel cables or are they more partial to the nylon? Is that I, a certain preference for majority of wrestlers? I really don't know. Um, years ago, I think it was a time kind of thing. I think the old timers and the bigger guys the, and the guys that wrestled more the old 80s style, I think they prefer the normal ropes. You know, that style wasn't about, you know, jumping from the second rope and springboarding to the top from there and then diagonal to the other top and then running down the top rope like a tight rope. That shit, you know, wasn't what they were doing in the 80s. And, and the big guys that, that, that were around back then, you know, the Greg Valentine, King Kong Bundy and Earthquake, those guys, I think, you know, they were just fine with the ropes. And a lot of those guys wouldn't prefer the stiffness of the steel cables because it does hurt and you got to get conditioned to it. And when you start training for your first time, as far as running the ropes, you, you have bruises uh, under your arm and um, or your or your back there. And um, I, I hit the ropes and it bothers me to see and it looks stupid to me to see wrestlers turn their back and then just kind of like lean into it and then just take off running. I don't know if you notice or not, but I use that to catapult me always have. I think I told the story about when giant Baba tried to fool me and threw the young boy down on my feet thinking I wasn't going to react enough the way that I was doing that, but proved him wrong. And that's why you shouldn't be nervous when I'm behind the wheel of a car. I got good reflexes. Good reflexes. You're ready to roll. 